video, I'm going to go over some problems that are similar to what's in your 3.06 TGA. So this first question needs to be solved algebraically in order to receive full credit. So I know that you can type this into the calculator and find it using matrices, but I do need to see all of your steps algebraically on this one problem so that I can give you credit for that. Um, so let's go ahead and let's see which variable it is that we want to eliminate. So I decided to go ahead and eliminate x in this problem. You can eliminate any variable you want to, right? As long as you're always eliminating the same one every time. So to start off doing this, I'm going to go ahead and take equation 1 and equation 2, and I'm going to combine them together. So I want to think about what would be my ideal situation. What do I want x to look like in these two equations in order to get them to be equal and opposite, right? It needs to be the same number, and it needs to have the opposite sign. So equal and opposite, well, let's see, I have a 6x down here, so it'd be really nice if my top equation had a negative 6x. So I'm going to take equation number 1 and multiply by negative 6. So I do negative 6 times x plus y plus z equals 2. And that's going to turn this equation into negative 6x minus 6y minus 6z equals negative 12. So now I'm going to go ahead and combine that with equation number 2. So I have 6x minus 4y plus 5z equals 31. So now when I add these two equations together, negative 6x and plus 6x cancel, and negative 6y minus 4y equals negative 10y. Negative 6z plus 5z is minus z, and that's equal to negative 12 plus 31, which is 19. So this is going to turn into now my equation number 4, because remember, these are going to be equations 1, 2, and 3. So now I need to create another equation, okay, equation 5, and I need to combine two of these original equations and eliminate the same variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and combine equation 1 and equation 3. So when I look at this, if I want them to be equal and opposite, notice here I have a 5x. So it would be really nice if my top equation was a negative 5x. So I'm going to take negative 5 and multiply that by the top equation, so that x plus y plus z equals 2. So when I do that, I'm going to get this new equation, negative 5x minus 5y minus 5z equals negative 10. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and combine that with equation 3. So I have 5x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 13. So I'm just going to add them both together. So negative 5x and 5x cancel. Negative 5y and 2y is negative 3y. Negative 5z and 2z is minus 3z, and so that's going to give me, on the right side, I have negative 10 plus 13, which is going to be 3. So this is going to be now equation number 5. So now I know I'm out of room here, but I'm going to go to the next slide, and I'm going to go ahead and combine equation 4 and equation 5. So equation 4, remember, was negative 10y minus z equals 19, and equation number 5 was negative 3y minus 3z equals 3. So now when I combine these, I want to think about which variable I want to eliminate. Well, here I have a minus z, and then here I have a minus 3z. So if I want to eliminate z, it'd be really nice if I had a 3z and a minus 3z. So to get this to be the opposite sign, I need to multiply by 3, but I also need to make the 3 negative, right? Because negative numbers are how we get something to switch in sign. So when I go ahead and do that, this is going to be what my equation looks like. So I multiply everything by negative 3. So I have 30y plus 3z equals, and then I have 19 times 3, which is going to give me 57. Okay, so that's going to be negative 57. Um, so now that equation I can go ahead and combine with my negative 3y minus 3z equals 3. And so when I do that, 30y minus 3y is going to be 27y, 3z minus 3z cancels, and then we have negative 57 plus 3, um, which is going to give us negative 54. So now we can go ahead and divide both sides by 27. And when we do that, we get y equals negative 2. So when we have y equals negative 2, we can plug back into either equation 4 or 5 to solve for um, z. So I'm just going to pick equation 4. So we have negative 10y. So negative 10 times negative 2 minus z is equal to 19. Negative 10 times negative 2 is going to be positive 20 minus z. That's equal to 19. So now to solve this, we're going to go ahead and subtract 20 from both sides. And so when we do that, we have negative z equals negative 1. Okay, negative z is like a coefficient of negative 1. So when you divide both sides by negative 1, we get z equals 1. 
So we have z equals 1, uh, y equals negative 2, and now we need to solve for x. So I always like to go back to the original equation where there was no coefficients to solve for x, because I think that's the quickest way to do it. So we're just going to plug in those values that we have. Um, so somewhere on here, I'm going to find some room. OK, so we have x plus y plus z equals 2, right? So we already know that x plus negative 2 is y and then plus z, which is 1, that's equal to 2. So this tells me that x plus negative 2 plus 1 is going to be minus 1. So x minus 1 equals 2. And then we add 1 to both sides. And we have x equals 3. So the final ordered triple is going to be 3, negative 2, 1. And that's the solution to the system of equations. OK, so you need to show all of this work on that problem in order to receive full credit. So now let's try this problem. It says you can use matrices and you can use Kramer's rule or um, reduced row echelon form, but you have to write out your matrices to receive full credit. OK, so if I'm going to do this problem, I actually prefer to do a reduced row echelon form. And remember, we're going to do that on the augmented matrix. So we're going to write out all our coefficients. So the first row is going to be 3, 2, negative 2, and then 18, right? Because in the augmented matrix, we put coefficients and constants all together. Um, remember, wherever there is no coefficient, we add a coefficient of 1. So we have 4, 1, 1, and then we have 25. Um, and then the final row is going to be 5, negative 10, 4, and 5. OK, so we're going to go to the calculator now. And remember, we do new matrix. Um, we need to tell it it's a 3 by 4 matrix. Um, and we go ahead and enter the values. So we have 3, we have 2, let's see, negative 2, and then we have 18. Um, and then we keep going. We have 4, 1, 1, and we have 25. And then we have 5, negative 10, and we have 4, and then 5. Okay, so you hit enter. Um, and remember, we do this reduced row echelon form, and then we choose matrix A. Um, and it gives us our solutions. Remember, the last column is going to be the solution. So we have um, 5.2, 2.7, and 1.5. So we just go ahead and write that as a tri uh, ordered triple, 5.2, 2.7, and the last one was 1.5. Okay, um, That is the solution to this. If you want, you can use Kramer's rule, but I honestly think it's a little bit quicker if you do reduce row echelon form. Okay, so in this one, we have a word problem. It says, pause for a cause is collecting supplies for animals at the local shelter. They have a budget of $1,700 to purchase food, toys, and beds. Food costs $15 per bag. Toys cost $10 each, and beds cost $20 each. The number of bags of food they need to purchase is five more than the number of toys. Also, the number of beds they need to purchase is equal to twice the number of toys. Write a system of equations that can be used to determine how many bags of food X, the number of toys Y, and the number of beds Z they can purchase. So first thing is we need to define our variables, right? So X equals food, Y equals toys, and Z equals beds. Okay, and remember what I showed you in the video was you take each sentence and you translate it into a equation. So a budget of $1,700, and that's going to be $15 for food, $10 for toys, and $20 for beds, right? So if we say 15x for food plus 10y for toys plus 20z for beds, that equals the total of $1,700. Okay, now let's look at the next sentence. The number of bags of food they need to purchase is five more than the number of toys. Remember, is is like that buzzword that tells us we have an equal sign. So the number of bags of food is x. So x is, which means like x equals five more than, so five plus the number of toys, right? Toys is y. So we have x equals five plus y. And then it says the number of beds they need is equal to twice the number of toys. Okay, so once again, we have our is, and it even says equals. So the beds, that's Z, is equal to twice. Remember, twice means two times, right? So two times the number of toys, and remember, toys is Y. So that's all you need to do in this problem, okay? So you just go ahead and have your equations, one, two, three, and once you've written them out, that's all you need to do on this problem. You don't actually need to go ahead and solve. Okay, so that's everything in this TGA. If you have any questions, please let me know.